Okay, progressing forward from our ranges of combat. We're working our way in. The very first thing you learned to do was if you had a weapon, what you would do. Now we're dealing with the ranges of combat that are with regards to if you're empty-handed. You don't have a weapon that you can quickly grab. So the first thing you learned was understanding what a kicking range is. How far an opponent has to be from you so that you can use a kick. Then you don't just use any kick, you use a scoop kick to the groin, in which you're targeting the fastest kick, a quick snap that anybody can do, and to a target that's very close and very vulnerable. Now sometimes you don't have an opportunity to be in a kicking range, you're startled and the opponent comes from behind you, you have to turn, verbalize, and go for the eyes. But sometimes we're caught so far off guard that we don't know and we end up in a situation where we're being grabbed. Now when you're being grabbed, there's many systems of martial arts out there that can teach you how to get out of it. But they require a lot of training, a lot of time spent, and that's not what we have here. So I would like to get across to you the fastest way. And once again, we're targeting those weak areas in the body, the human body. This is natural. This is nature. It's your biology. So we're trying to terminate you as quickly as possible to cause as much pain so that you can escape. Uh, John, please come on in. The types of grabs that you normally see is if somebody grabs a hold of your hand. They can grab a hold of your hand with one hand, or they can grab a hold of your hand with two hands, okay? Or they can grab a hold of your hand with just the right hand. The, the right hand okay, so all of these scenarios are you're going to do exactly the same thing. If John grabs a hold of my hand, let's say with one hand over here, there's my scoop kick to the groin. As you can see, I'm going for the groin. I reach over and I do an eye jab with the rear hand. But these are moves that are right there and readily available. Let's say he grabs me with the other hand. Same thing. I can do a quick shot to the groin. And then when I go quick shot to the groin, it causes pain and makes him release. Boom! As he releases, if he's right here, there's an eye jab, and I can then take off. Okay? So it's important that we cause pain instantaneously. And we don't try to do, let me move that hand, please. We don't try to turn, rock, this, and do these types of moves, which are very difficult, take a lot of time to train. And if you have that training and you're, you already have it, you can do it. But this is for the person that has never really encountered such things. And even if you do know that stuff, going for the eyes, going for the groin right away, causes that pain instantaneously for you to escape. Now he grabs a hold of me with both hands, there's still no change. Here's my scoop kick to the groin, and there's a shot to the eyes, and you escape to gain safety. No, no, help, help! Ah! We just covered one of the most common grabs that was out there, a single and a double-handed grab to one of your limbs, your arms, you could be your shoulders, and so on. And those are the moments where you quickly fire off a quick shot to the groin. The shot to the groin can be a quick kick, it could be a knee, anything you can utilize. It's the same motion. So that's what I want you to see. You don't have to learn uh, different techniques, don't have to memorize patterns. This is all basically based off reaction and action. Okay, you see the target that's there, you quickly hit it, the two softest places, the eyes and the groin, and you create a pain to make movement. Sometimes you're caught off guard, and when you're caught off guard, uh, a choke comes in from behind. That's another common uh, attack that's used to grab a hold of you, to subdue you. Okay? So when something like this happens, you don't want to wait for it to get set in. You see, when somebody tries to choke you, they're trying to cut off your oxygen supply. So the first thing you have to do is to stop the choke from happening. Instantly, you have to grab onto the hand, turn your head, and tuck. When your head is tucked in this way, the choke can no longer happen. But also what ends up happening, see their arm is like this. When their arm is this close to you, one of the greatest tools you have is your teeth, your canines. That's actually the reason they're there. This is self-defense. Okay, We use this from an art called kinumutai. Kinumutai is the art of biting and gouging. So sometimes we have to employ such things to bite to cause some pain. Okay, that moment of pain that I cause, I take advantage of that pain to create some space to escape. Come on in, John. Now you see, if John comes in and, and goes for the choke, go right away. And I wait and I flap my hands around here, it's too late. I'm going to be put to sleep and I will be controlled. So I have to be able to react as soon as it comes and grab a hold of his arm and tuck my chin. And see, so I get to this position. Now I use the leverage holding on to him, and I use my canines to start to rip it and tear at the bicep. Okay, the artery that runs right along your bicep is what I'm going for. <laughs> and I
And as I go this way, and I gnaw at him, he releases his hold. As he releases his hold, I know where his groin is. It's right here. Okay? So as you see the move, as he comes, I grab, I bite to create some space. I turn and I hit the groin, and now I take off running. Okay? This is going to be your technique to escape from a rear naked choke or somebody that grabs you from behind around your throat area. Welcome back. We're still in the grabbing range over here. So you've learned the two-handed or single-handed grab to your hand. You've learned when somebody comes from behind and grabs a hold of your neck. Now another key approach is if somebody comes like this with two-handed grab to your throat. It's another very commonly used uh, attack by a lot of attackers. So John, come on in here. Now when John comes on in here and I'm at this position here with this attack to the throat, you see it's difficult here now to kick him in the groin because he's a little too close. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to knee to the groin, okay? You see how it causes his body to go backwards. Now I can take my leg back and go right up to the groin, okay? And you're going to make contact. You can do the exact same move you do with the scoop kick, but this time you're actually making contact with your shin, okay? So from here, you have this attack on here. The first thing you do is the following. You grab a hold. Grab here, knee, drop the leg, and scoop up. And make contact with your shin. This is causing enough pain, causing him to let go of your hold, to push him off and run. Okay? Um, so one more time, John. So when he's here, he grabs a hold of me. I grab the hands, I go for the knee, I go for the shot, I go for the shot, I push, and I run as I escape to gain safety. No, 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 stop! Stop! <laughs> Now I'd like to come up with a final scenario uh, with regards to grabbing and the grabbing range of combat. Once again, a quick review. The most important thing is that you understand that there's a kicking range, then there's a hand range, and then there's a grabbing range. In the grabbing range, we've reviewed, reviewed one hand grab, we've reviewed a two hand grab, we've reviewed a back rear naked choke, we've reviewed a choke with two hands. Now another very common uh, maneuver to control somebody is to grab a hold of their head and hold them in a headlock. And we want to see how do we escape from this again. John, come on in. So it's already too late. He's gotten his headlock around me. The most first thing I do is I grab a hold of him here. Now I turn. Stay right there, John. As I turn my head, you see right over here is his nipple. Okay? Right over here is his floating ribs. There's a lot of uh, material here, a lot of skin I can go for. So once again, I'm just going to turn in, re-grab him, and do my bite. Bite over here to create a little bit of space, hit the groin, and escape to gain safety. This is what it would look like. When I'm over here, I grab a hold of him, I'm turning and I start to bite. Ah! This allows the space, bring this hand forward, oh, kick the hit to the groin, and escape to gain safety. Ah! Welcome back. Now we want to address the final range over here. That's when you're pinned to the ground. This is the scariest position to be in. And what I would like to show you here, once again, utilizing Kinumutai, you're going to go in a little closer to this person. You're not going to push them away. They're already coming to you. Their face is right next to your face. Okay, when your face is that close, you have more targets. You have the side of the cheeks. You have the throat. Over here, you have the ear and you have the nose. These are your targets to bite. Once again, to create pain. And in that moment of pain, you steal that opportunity to create space, once again, to escape to gain safety. The first position I'd like to show you is if when you're pinned down, this is a cross-side position. Your opponent is laying across your body, okay? So I want you to see, if he's got one arm underneath over here, trying to pin me down. Right over here is his target. Here's his throat, here's the ear, and if he turns into me, there's his nose. But what's very important before you bite is that you re-grab a hold of your opponent. So I grab my own hands like this, 
If I can't get my hands around him, I grab a hold of his clothing, okay? And I pull him closer to me so that I can keep the bite on for at least five to six seconds. If I do not do that and just go like this to bite, he'll know and then he'll come back a lot stronger and you're going to lose your opportunity. So it's very important here that when it's this position here, I re-grab a hold of my own hand or of him and then I sink in the bite. <laughs> See, this causes him to create this space. When he creates this space, I bring my legs in, I kick him off, get back up to my feet. Welcome back, guys. So now we're still in this cross side position, but as you see, there's just one slight variation. His arm over here this time is not under my neck the way it was before, it's over my neck. It's over my head, and he's kind of holding me down this way. So I don't have access to any of the vital points on his face, his nose, his throat, or his ear. Nothing changes, you see, because now what he presents to me is this lat area right here. There's a big chunk of meat right over here on the lat. So once again, the most important part is uninterrupted biting. That means I have to hold on to my opponent so I can lay the bite in for five to six seconds to cause sufficient damage so that I can create the proper space to escape. So when I'm in this kind of a situation, once again, if I have the ability to grab my own hands, I can grab my own hands. If the person is a lot larger, you grab a hold of their clothing. Once you grab a hold of their clothing over here, you sink in the bite. See, that causes them instantly to rise up, turn, kick away, and then continue your escape. Sometimes when you're pinned to the ground, you find yourself in this situation where your attacker is straddled over you. They either have their hands here on your throat or they're trying to bring their face closer to you. If you try to push them away over here at this distance in range, it's not going to work because you're resisting. You're going force against force. His momentum and force is pushing down towards me. If I push him away, we're fighting each other. So here what's very important is I feel this energy coming to me. I grab a hold of him. As I grab a hold of him, I pull him to me. As I pull him to me, I slide my head to the side like this. And I re-grab a hold of him. And I start my bite. And that gives me my moment to escape to gain safety. Down. The first one we saw is when somebody's pinned across your body. So you're laying down and they're across your body. The second one was they were straddled on top of you. The third one, now this is the dangerous one. This is where your legs are open. This is where he's coming towards you and coming in this kind of a position and manner. Okay, so the very first thing that you have to do when somebody's coming like this, remember, we don't fight force with force. We go with the force. So I wrap my legs or I do really quickly bring him this way. <coughs> using your legs, okay? You use the legs in conjunction with your hands as he's, so you gotta wait till he comes to you. If you just try to pull him from here, it'll be difficult. So as he comes forward, I just pull him in. As I pull him in, I bite. <coughs> that creates space and gives you enough time to bring your legs in to push off, get to your feet, and escape to gain safety. No, no, stop! <laughs> 